In this video, I will show you how to deploy software using group policy. Um, first, let me show you a little diagram of, of how I've got this set up. And uh, the reason I wanted to show you this is because I've got my files, MSI and EXEs, on a separate server than my domain controller. Um, that is recommended. You don't really want to have thousands of computers uh, downloading and pulling files down from your domain controller. That just puts a bunch of extra work on your domain controller and could slow it down. So it's, it's best if you've got um, a separate server to set up a file server or shared folder and put your files there. I mean, if you're a really small network and it's all you got, then then, then put it on your domain controller. Um, and there's two separate ways to do, to do this for MSI and EXE. In this video, I'll go over an MSI, and I've got I've got written instructions for both on my website, and I will link to those. But the EXE uh, is is a different method than what I'm showing here. The, the default group policy only supports MSI, and for a EXE, you've got to write a, a script. Um, and I, again, I've got that information on my website with with a script. Um, but for MSI, let's get started, and, I, and both methods will um require a file share and I I'm gonna walk through that because a lot of guides online um, set those up incorrectly with really really poor permissions that is insecure so I want to walk through that so let's start and let me jump over to my other server so this will be my file server where I'm gonna have my files in this example I'm gonna install Chrome so on your computer, just pick a folder or create a new one. I'm going to create a new one called software. And then we're going to go into sharing. I'm going to go to advanced sharing. I'm going to share this folder. And you can change the name. But I'm going to keep it software. And then I want to change the permissions. This is what's really important. Uh, you want to remove everyone. You do. This, this, everyone will include unauthenticated users and you don't want everyone um, to have access to your uh, file shares. This is how viruses spread, this is how ransomware um, attacks folders and files. So remove everyone and then add just your domain users. This will give all of your authenticated users access to this and you want to give them just read only there's no reason for your users to have full control or change permissions to this folder um, and you can lock it down even further you know if you if you're wanting to deploy software to or have uh, you know, just a specific security group or specific department to have access to this folder um, you, you can limit this to just a specific security group but for this example I'm just going to give all of my authenticated users access so that will give them access to the share um, just click OK apply and then you need to set up the security permissions to it um, and this one by default does not have everyone so but we do need to add the domain users and again just give them read and execute they do not need full or modified permissions Apply. And that's all there is to securely setting up the um, permissions. You just need to modify the share permissions and the security permissions, and just make sure there's not uh, an everyone group on the share permissions or the security permissions. So now that that's set up, I'm going to move my Chrome MSI into this directory. And before I go set up the, the group policy, I'm going to test the access to that shared folder. So I'm going to log in with an account on the on PC one, and then we'll just make sure I can access that folder. Because if I can't access that older folder, the uh, group policy is not going to work. So my file server is srvwef, and there's the folder. And yes, I can access it. So again, if you if you can't if a user can't access this folder, the group policy is going to fail. So it's a, it's a good little 
good way to test um, test access before you try to go deploy group policy because if you deploy group policy and it doesn't work, it doesn't the logs doesn't really give you uh, a detailed reason as to why. But a lot of times it's due to permissions. So with the folder set up, um, that was really the hard part. The group policy is very easy. So let's jump over to uh, my domain controller and we'll set up the group policy. So from here, I've got uh, computers separated from the users and I'm just going to deploy this to uh, all the computers. Um, you know, if you got things broken out into folders, if I wanted to deploy it to just the HR computers, I could apply it here, apply it to IT, but I'm going to apply it to um, all the computers. In in the articles I've I've written on this, um, I do show you how to use um, item level targeting, so that, that way you could uh, target just a security group. So you can still apply it to here. Um, but well, let's just, I'll show you real quick. So we're going to create the GPO and name it whatever you want. And then we'll come in and edit it. Come into computer policies, uh, software settings, software installation, and then right click and go new package. And then here you want to browse to uh, that shared folder that you set up. Um, so do not browse to a local folder. So if you've got, so if you go, you know, to your local folder and then browse to the MSI. It's not going to work because your computers, you know, your, your remote computers aren't going to have access to the domain controller's um, local disk. Um, it's got to be, this needs to be that shared folder. So my server, the server name, and then whatever the shared folder was. And then then select the MSI folder file and so I'm just going to do assign the advanced and you can get into the advanced after going through this it just gives you some more advanced options for the deployment but I'll just select assign and that's it um, so if you come in here and right click go to properties uh, you can just look at some of the options the name deployments Deployment options. I mean, there's there, here's the advanced options. There's really no important settings to come here and modify. You can change the name of it, um, but again, it's there's really basic settings, and there's nothing I can re recommend you come in here and change. So at this point, the group policy is set up. Now all you have to do is go to the computer and. Reboot it, and the, so the software should install um, while it boots up. So let's jump over to the computer. And so the computer needs the, the, the GPO settings before it reboots. So you can either go to a computer and do a GP update, or you can wait for the computer to refresh its screw policy automatically, which happens every 90 minutes. Um, I'll go ahead and just force a group policy update. And you'll see it gives me this message here, and that's because um, the, the software can't install. I mean, it has to install during a reboot, so it's, it's telling me that some group policies won't apply um, or will apply during the next startup. So yes, I'm going to restart.
Let's restarting, applying software installation settings. That was really fast. So the install failed. Um, and when that happens, what you'll want to do is come into that computer's uh, Windows system logs and you should see a couple of errors related to application management and group policy. And you can see right here the install of, of application Google Chrome from policy uh, failed with these errors. And here's another one. Failed the installation. So let me troubleshoot that. I'll pause the video and then we'll, I'll come back and um, try it again. Okay, I found the issue, but I wanted to... Uh, um, I was going to mention that that screen that shows during the boot up the install, that that's a separate group policy that you need to enable. Um, but I'll mention that here in a minute. So, the issue was uh, the, the folder permissions. And let me just log in here. So, I googled the errors that were in the the event logs. And this is what I'm saying that when I googled those those errors, you know, people say, oh, add everyone to the folder. So that's, this is, a lot of people do this, not just uh, vendors, vendors also, and you know, people working in IT, the, the quick fix is to add everyone. Again, I, I recommend you don't do that. Um, the solution was, let me jump over to my member server. So because it's a computer uh, policy, the, the software installs before the user's logged in. So when I set up the folder permissions, I originally just had domain users on there. So during the boot up, no user is logged in. So the computer is not going to have access to this shared folder. So what I did was, I just gave domain computers read access to the share and also access to domain computers. If I was using the uh, user, deploying the software to a user, um, you wouldn't have to add domain computers. Uh, but again, the, the software installs during the boot up, no users logged in, so users don't have permissions. So all I had to do was add domain computers, and that resolved the problem. So now if I go over to the computer, um, I rebooted it, and now Chrome is installed. So that's it. It's pretty simple, um, as long as you've got everything set up correctly. And, uh, and I'll link to this in, in the, the video, but I've got written instructions on this, and it's got a little more details on it for you know troubleshooting. I do mention at the event logs, check it, and actually this was the error that I was getting. Um, what I was trying to show you, but it, I, I didn't get it in the video, but when you boot up, if you want your screen to show you the message that applying software uh, installation settings, you'll need to go enable this group policy. Um, it's, it's nice to have, that way your users can see that something's happening, like it's installing software, otherwise it you know, they may be sitting at the boot up screen for a minute or two and they, they don't know why. Enabling this group policy will display this message, letting them know that something's um, installed. And a couple more tips for troubleshooting and, and um, testing. Uh, one good one is if you keep having issues, you know, it could be the MSI install file. Um, there's pre-built MSIs out there, like, you know, 7-Zip and Notepad, those are really small and, and great to test with, so keep having problems, you know, try one of those. I've tested both of those, and those work no problem. And then again, this was just for MSI. If you want to deploy an EXE, it's completely different. And I've got a complete how-to written up on that with the script, so you'll have to use a, a script in the group policy um, still using a shared folder, which I've got written instructions on that in the other video. Uh, so that's it for this video. Um, check out my website for more Active Directory tips and tools. Thanks for watching.